think we've seen each other before, haven't we? Yeah, I totally think we have. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back! I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and we're going to continue on with my series of, you know, top 10 best classic and new Who villains. Again, with the, if you've not seen my video before of my top 10 Cybermen stories, just to give you some rehashing. With this video, it's going to be, um, stories, I'm mean, sorry, the stories in top 10 or top something stories of villains from Classic and New Who that have had at least five stories to their time. So if it's a villain that's been in New Who and Classic Who, but it doesn't have five stories, then I admit I'm probably not going to do a video on that. And now with this next part of the series, it's going to be about my top 10 Dalek stories. And I'm going to say, guys, right off the bat, you're going to think this is the worst list ever. <laughs> Literally, my choices when it comes to Dalek stories is just so strange. I mean, really, it is so completely strange. <laughs> I know it's strange. You're going to know it's strange. I know it's strange. You know that I know it's strange. I know that you know that I know it's strange. So we all know it's strange. Just letting you know right there. This is a very, very subjective, 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 subjective. <sighs> Subjective, subjective list. Okay, now I've got some mango juice curry, Jimmy. Let's do this. Okay, so coming at number 10. Here's where it gets subjective already. We have from the first Doctor's era, Mission to the Unknown. And those of you who know anything about Mission to the Unknown, you know one, it is completely missing. This story is not anywhere. I found it out because of the novelization, Mission to the Unknown. And here's the fun thing. This is the very first Doctor Who novelization of an episode I've ever read. Yes! The first Doctor was... I've now been... kind of immersed myself into Doctor Who novelizations. The first Doctor is my first Doctor Who novelization. It's pretty spiffing. And Mission to the Unknown is one episode, and thinking, oh, one episode, why, you know, would you put it on your list? But I, and also, those of you who do know about it, know the Doctor never makes an appearance in it. Yeah, I think this is like one of the only stories the Doctor never makes an actual appearance in the episode. And this will serve as a prequel, or a prologue, more, yeah, prologue, that's what it is, a prologue to the Daleks' master plan. Okay, I have never seen the episode because it's impossible to see. All I have are the writings of the novelization, and it was adapted to the book by John Peel. John Peel was the author who novelized it. And maybe it could be the fact that he did a damn good job novelizing it because, guys, literally, this was such a good story. So, yes, the Doctor's not in it, but I had a really good time reading Mission to the Unknown. I just did. So now, we're at number nine, and that is Evil of the Daleks. I also do not own that one, but it's also mostly missing. And when I say mostly, I mean mostly missing in every sense of the word, mostly. There's no way you can really own Evil of the Daleks. Okay, I believe Evil of the Daleks is the very last episode of the Doctor's, second Doctor's first season, and it brings in Victoria as a companion along with Jamie, who's already a companion from before. And we, having Ben and Polly recently have just exited the show. And Evil of the Daleks was such a unique story for me. It did something different with the Daleks. It did the same thing the Daleks always, you know, want and look forward to doing. It, it did. It covered the same core essentials of a Dalek story, but did it in a very different way. And that's what I like about the Daleks when it comes to classic Who. The writers seem to understand and remember, it's like, with these Daleks, they're in metal casing. Yes, but these are ultimately still people who have been mutated inside these casings. So the Daleks have ambitions that are ruthless like we humans do, but they also can, they seem to be looked at as humans who are just mechanical. And because the writers seem to look at them as humans who are just in this metal casing, mutated humans who are in this metal casing, they have uh, better ideas or more dynamic ideas of how to display their ambitions and their power. They know how to realize the Daleks more. That's my personal 
I know feelings about that story, and I like Evil of the Dogs for that. So, coming at number eight, we have, um, this can be polarizing to some, wherever I place it, those who love this story or hate this story, some will think it's too high, some will think it's too low on the list, it's just where it fell. Resurrection of the Daleks. Okay, I know some people who love this story think it's just, like really incredible. Some who hate this story. It can go both ways. Resurrection of the Daleks. Uh, it brought the Daleks back. I was happy to see them again. But more importantly, it brought Davros back. But and it brought him back in a very realistic way. He's not he so blind to the deception of the Daleks. Remember that is, he understands the Daleks can betray him and will betray him at any given moment. He knows that there is no way he might always be able to trust them because of course he cannot trust them. They did kill him once. Mm -hmm. And he's very realistic about that. And I have to appreciate that he is, more, you know, the way he was displayed in this. And also we get to see him have m more discussion with the Doctor. I always find great. And again, yeah, Davros is just a really good character for me. I like him as a villain. As a villain, he just is great to me. So I'm almost, I'm almost always happy to see him. I really am. When it comes to this story, okay, Tegan... Okay, some people love Tegan, some hate Tegan. I was okay with her leaving. I didn't feel one way or the other about it. She left, end of story, there we go. I just, I didn't, I wasn't too broken up. But it was like, okay, I, I understand why the doctor will miss her. There we go, so there's that one. Now I think we're at number seven now, I think we are. And we have the Dalek Invasion of Earth, which I still can't believe I own this story. Oh my gosh, this story, oof, wow. The only problem I have with this story, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, is simply when the Daleks are on that bridge and they are, you know, walking, I mean, sorry, riding along or gliding along the bridge, that shot was not done long enough or from as many cool angles as it could have been done. Like when you see the Cybermen in the invasion, or an invasion, and you see them walking through all down the street or through all these cool monuments, it you those are good shots. They linger on the shots. I'm like, you should have shown these guys from a better angle. Missed opportunity. Why, why, why? You think I'm overreacting. I am, but that's just the way it goes. It was a great opportunity that was completely missed for me. Sorry, I'm calmer now. But there's, oh, this overall is still a very, very excellent story. Uh, I understand that some people, this is, the pacing is too slow for them to enjoy it, but I'm fine with it. That's just the way I go. Okay, next one we have up, okay? Again, this is where you're going to probably think um, this list is the worst list in the world because either those people think it's overrated or are going to think it's too high. Those who absolutely love this story are going to think how dare it's not number one. That's just where it fell. Genesis of the Daleks. Guys, I love this story. I love pretty much every story on this list. This is just where it fell. I like the story. I enjoy it a great deal. It's just for some strange reason, I don't have the impulse to go back and watch it all the time as often as some other stories like City of Death, Shada, Invasion of Dinosaurs, Carnival of Monsters, Frontier in Space. I can go on and on with the story of Invasion. I can go on and on with the stories I watched before before watching this one. That being said, I do still enjoy it. I do. Don't worry. Guys, calm down. Shh. I just like it. Peace and love. Okay. Next one up is where you're going to hate me again. Because everybody, going, every, everyone is going to think this is just way too high. I have very unique tastes, guys. I have very unique tastes, and that's why Destiny of the Daleks is just where it is. Davros is back. This brought him back. And we get a lot of time with him and the Doctor, and Tom Baker is excellent as the Doctor, yes. But my god, the man is on top form here. He is so good. I like the introduction of the Movellans. Um, and also how this touches back to the first doc Doctor's era. People often forget that the Movellans, the idea of the, doc of the Daleks fighting the Movellans, was mentioned in the first Doctor's era. Now we really get to see this happen. We really do get to see it. 
we get Romana, um, who's regenerated, and she's played by Layla Ward, and she is awesome in the role of Romana. I said it before, I say it again. If you wanted to have a female Time Lord, just bring back Romana and cast an act a really good actress in her spot, who's very good at being seductive and strong. And when I say seductive, I mean charismatic and sexual because of her confidence. Layla Ward and Mary Tam are confident women. Th that that gives them sex appeal. Confidence is sexy in a cool way. I don't know why sexy now is not allowed to happen, especially in you know, women. It's like, oh, if you're sexy, you're being subjectified. Uh, sorry, objectified. And it's like, you know what? Shut up. Just, just shut up. <laughs> sorry. Um, that was a long tangent. I am sorry for that. Mm -hmm. But Destiny of the Daleks, again, with the idea of a logical impasse, where the Daleks and Movellans, they are at a logical impasse. They literally cannot beat each other because they're two robotic species. That's just cool to me. It just is. I like this sort of stuff. And else again, I have one main priority. Have fun. And I have fun watching Destiny of the Daleks. Guys, what can I do? What can I do? Kat, what are you going to do with me? Nothing. Just accept me for who I am and let's all just love each other respectfully. There we go. Okay, so now, I believe we're at number four, but I could be totally wrong about that one. We have the Daleks Master Plan. You think, I'm raising up this book again when it's called Mission to the Unknown. How, why am I doing that? Because if you look closely, you can't really see it. Um, I'll still decide. The Daleks Master Plan Part 1 is also in this. When I say Part 1, I do not mean Episode 1. No, 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 no. I literally mean a large portion of the story. Because this story ends where, where it ends with the novelization. Clearly there's more of the Dalek's Master Plan that's not in this. This is Part 1. But this ends with um, the Doctor tricking the Daleks and tricking Chen who thinks they have the, I think it's Terranium or Telanium, or sorry, I could, whatever it was, that core. The core they needed for the weapon, the Time Destructor. He, they think they have it when the Doctor tricked them and they do not have the real core. The Doctor made a fake one, so the Daleks and Chen think they have the real ones. They think, okay, yes, we're gonna, you know, we're now are going to win and we're going to destroy the entire universe and et cetera and so forth. And there's also an alliance in there. And then the Doctor, Sarah, and Steven, they, are flying off, but they know eventually the, doc the, the Daleks are going to find out that they do not have the real core and are going to come chasing after them again. This was so awesome to me. Again, the reason why I have the novelization and not the story is because majority of the 12 part tur is missing. There, are, I think, are only like three episodes that are intact, and I'm not going to go around. I'm just tired of going around and, and watching stills, watching stills just for a moment of some actual action that was uncorrupted or not missing that was intact. I, I was like, I just, I'm too tired of this. So I need a break from that. After the second Doctor's Era Who, watching all those freeze stills and all that nearly kicked my ass. So honestly, I just need time from that before I'll, I'll try and go back and watch, you know, the lost episodes as much as I can later on, but I was okay just reading this. And I was like, how are they going to have a 12-part story? How could you possibly have that much story and make it work, especially with the Daleks? But no, they find very incredible inventive ways. They latch on to the prologue of Mission to the Unknown and give you a lot of good elements there. Um, it's not before we got to the Christmas special, because the Daleks Master Plan also has the... Um, first Christmas special ever. And that has nothing to do with the actual episode because it was going to take place on Christmas. So I said, let's make it very light and fluffy with the doctor breaking the fourth wall and saying Merry Christmas to everyone. But this story also, I believe, marks the first time a companion died. Katarina, who was a Trojan, she sacrifices herself so that the, um, they can get the message to Earth and warn Earth. She sacrifices herself in this beautiful, just painful way, but Oh my god. That really affected me in the book. And whoever wrote this, John Peel, whoever novelized this, did a damn good job with novelizations. So, the Daleks Master Plan, I know it's missing so I can't really see the episode, but whoever novelized it, if the episode itself was bad, my bad, but whoever novelized it did such a good job that I'm going with that. And even though it's not all of the Daleks Master Plan, it's a, lo a large portion enough 
for me to know that the portion I did read was absolutely very good. So even if I'm saying just part one of Dog's Master Plan is good, part one is good. And again, that's more than just the first episode. It's probably around the fourth, fifth, or sixth episode is where this stopped. Okay, now we have Power of the Daleks. With Power of the Daleks, it's completely missing. We have to watch this animation. We have to watch the animated. And again, I'm happy that it got reanimated. But here's a problem. Whoever reanimated this, okay, they were not nearly as good as the people who animated the invasion. Or invasion. Where they added dimension to everything. They really helped you with the expressions of the characters a lot. You felt the action. And they made sure that you felt like there was something happening in every scene. There's organic movement. Again, this story is excellent. This story also has inspired other stories in New Who that people don't even know about. I'll get to later. I'll get to later. Um, but when it comes to this, no. Power of the Dogs is such a great story and it hurts me every day that they did not keep it. BBC did not keep it. Damn it. Damn it. And now for number two. We have from the third Doctor's Era, another episode I really want to own, but I can't because it's too expensive, Day of the Daleks. Okay, now there's a history here. To this day, I hear people say Day of the Daleks was not very good or was very bad. You're an idiot if you think it's bad. I'm sorry, I'll rephrase that. I, I respect you if you do not like it. I do. That's, that, that, that's you. It's up to you. You don't like it. Fine perfectly okay. But my god, it's such a good story to me. It's one of the best Dalek stories ever. Hence why I put it at number two. It's just perfection. I stand by that. Oh my god, it's a good story. I wish I owned it. The Doctor, Joe, the actual story. Everything is perfect. It's four parters. It does not drag. It, everything works about it. I freaking love it. And I do. I do. I just do. Okay, now, for number one. It's easy, it's simple, and we're doing it. Remembrance of the Daleks. This story is perfection. The Doctor, Ace, the whole story is absolutely wonderful. I know some people are like, oh, the, the Davros is barely in it. Okay, this was a the first episode of a series, and if you think about it, he is in it. He's just hidden, and he was actually there the entire time. It's just giving you the element of surprise, something to build up to. But also, it's the, it's the first episode or story in a season. Clearly, if the show was going to continue, he would have, Davros would have come back and would have come back grandly. It was just the beginning of something else. But we never saw that something else because the show got canceled. Now I hear some people gripe about the Doctor destroying all of, um, Scarrow with the Hand of Omega. Okay, let me kind of just make it very clear for you. You know why I don't care? Because the fact is... People like, I've seen people judge the Seventh Doctor say, oh my god, he's absolutely terrible for committing genocide. He's not the first Doctor to commit genocide. And some of the first, the people who criticize him for committing genocide are the same people who, hold, who say he doesn't hold a candle to people like the Tenth Doctor. And I got news for you, the Tenth Doctor committed genocide. All the Doctors at some point have killed and murdered. They have. Why you guys wait till to judge certain Doctors for doing it is beyond me. And I'm okay with the Doctor not feeling much remorse about it because like he's at his wits end with this he keeps on fighting back the Daleks and he keeps on they keep on coming back and killing more and more I'm okay with him not having a huge moral dilemma when it comes to this story I'm fine with that so now it's my number one and for those of you guys who are thinking what the heck happened to Frontier in space I'll get to why it was not on this list don't worry it's a good thing 
I'll tell you why later. You'll see why later, I promise. Now for some honorable mentions, we have the Daleks from the first Doctor's era. The Daleks, overall, I do very much love this story. It's just, um, but I see why some people say it could have been benefited by being one episode shorter. Just one. But I still very much do enjoy this story. The only reason it did not get on my top ten list is because, A, there are only ten slots, and B, it's also because, well, it's hard to say. With this one, ultimately, the, do the Doctor is the reason why they're in the mess to begin with. And he's the one who lied to them, and he said, you know, we had to go to this place, and we, when in reality, they didn't need to go there. They bought, went there because he simply was ambitious and wanted to explore, and he got them all in danger. Now, I don't hold this really much against him, because in the arc of the Doctor's character, the first Doctor, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. But it's just simply that um, I just prefer stories where the, the problem happened and the doctor is reacting to the problem rather than he sometimes directly caused the problem. But again, I'm not, I don't hold this against the first doctor because that's a part of his character arc. That's fine. Then we have also another honorable mention, Revelation of the Daleks. Love that story. I just don't own it, so I can't enjoy it very much because I don't see it very often. Honorable mention, I'll give it to Frontier in Space, and I'll tell you why later it did not hit this list. Don't worry, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Another honorable mention goes to the first season or series of the New Who in the Ninth Doctor era, Parting of the Ways. Now, Parting of the Ways, I like the majority of it completely. I really do. The dogs were scary, and they feel bad for Linda. It's just simply that the ending, the, the whole bad wolf thing where Rose Tyler conveniently turns into a a deity by staring into the TARDIS and then coming in and saving the Doctor and him just standing there and needing to be saved. I'm like, oh my god, this is pure deus ex machina. Rose is literally turned into a walking deus ex machina. Literally and figuratively. The Doctor is just standing there needing to be saved. Again, this is just so contrived. It's really poor, poorly built up. Just because we see the words bad wolf written throughout the series, that's not good build up. I'll talk to you later one day, maybe, maybe I'll talk to you one day, how that's actually not good storytelling. But also it created a problem that has filtered throughout New Who to this day ever since when it comes to that type of storytelling and using deus ex machinas and companions as plot devices. But the reason why I'm, I'm holding it down of Parting of the Ways, because usually I would not hold it back, uh, hold that down on an episode, is because people use Parting of the Ways as the epitome for excellent storytelling and they discredit other stories. But... Parting of the Ways has the same flaw as the story that they made fun of, so I just can't... That's why I hold it down, Parting of the Ways, because Parting of the Ways is guilty of the same thing that other people blame other episodes for being bad for. That's ultimately it. But this is my top 10 Daleks list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. What are your favorite Dalek stories? I understand that you're going to be different than mine. I get why. I get it. I get it. That's just how we all roll. Bye, guys.